Mike LeClaire. I'm the pastor of Living Hope Church. And um, uh, this Sunday, we're going to be going through Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. The title of the message is Sin Entered the World. What I'm going to do with you right now is share uh, from verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read it. I'm going to share um, my explanation of it. I'm going to share also my application of it and then my response to it. So, beginning at verse 1 of chapter 3, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So as I go into this explanation of what this means, there's a lot here. 
And I'm just going to skim the surface on it, basically. But I need to share who the serpent is. And there's different places we can find it. We can find it in Job. We can find it in Isaiah, Revelation, uh, a couple times over in Revelation. But I'm going to share what I found from Ezekiel 28, 13a. And it says, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. You're the, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stone. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Wow. God's special creation in this particular angel. And then he finds iniquity in him. In other words, he became self absorbed, selfish, indulgent, and he wanted to be like the most high. And if you look at how he speaks to man, the temptation he throws at man is that we would be like the most high. How does he do it? Well, let's first talk about his nature. We're still talking about who Satan is, right? We know that he is the serpent. Though it doesn't say in this verse, it says it in those other places I shared with you. So his nature is that he's sly, he's cunning, he's beguiling. He's dark, he's crafty, he's bent on destruction, he is a deceiver, and he is the accuser of the brethren before God night and day, saying why we don't belong to God, why we don't deserve to belong to him. So, how does he do this? He begins with a deception in speaking with Eve of how he could be, or she could be, like God. All right? Well, there's a couple things I want to share about that. First off, it's, it's a lie or a half lie or a half truth or call it what you want. But the bottom line is we were already like God in the sense that we were created in the image of God. So to be like God is, wasn't good enough, right? He wanted us to be, actually he wanted to tease us with the temptation of being God's ourselves because we were already created in his image. Second thing is, he uses deception. Um, we already understood what good was. To know the difference between good and evil, we already knew what good was. And that should have been enough. We know, and I know, and you know, that the Bible says God is good. Okay? God is good. And I'm created, and when I was created in his image, he said that it was very good. I know that. I know that the word of God is good. The Bible tells me that God is spirit. Spirit is good. God's spirit is good. And we know that the word of God is Jesus and Jesus is good. In Romans 16, 19, it says that we are to be excellent at what is good and simple of what is evil, ignorant of evil. Be excellent at what is good and innocent of what is evil. And that's what he's asking us to do here. That's what we should always be about pursuing what is truly good. We get hung up on pursuing knowledge. Well, we used to say in the late 1990s or the early 1990s, we said knowledge is power. Well, I don't think so. I think knowledge is a trap for deception. It's okay to know things, but to pursue knowledge in some sort of end result of attaining something higher becomes deceptive and sinful and leads us down a path. It's a trap, I believe. All right, what are we to pursue? That which is good. Pursue him. In your times of trouble, you call on knowledge. I don't know where that always benefits you. However, in your times of trouble, when you call upon God, I believe he shows up. So what's the other tactic besides uh, the other deception that Satan uses? Um, he puts an attack on the words of God. He twists God's words, even in this dialogue with Eve. He does the same thing with us all the time. When we pursue God, we study his word. If we don't know that word, we don't get it in us, our, we're apt to be deceived by the twisting of God's word. And it's really subtle and it's so tricky, but it changes the meanings and in her case, the outcomes which affect you and I today. So, the lying attack on God's word looks like this. He uses cunning and lying words against the words of God. And he begins with this. Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Those aren't God's words at all. So he's misquoting God 
in what he says. Second thing, he says, you will surely not die, or you will not surely die. Okay, that is a lie. We now have death. All die. All die. And then uh, the third thing, it says, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Okay, what are the true words? Those are the words that he shared with her. Here's the true words. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. Just a big turnover, big twist from what Satan's trying to say, he said. You may freely eat. Second thing is, uh, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. So there's one tree that you should not eat of. Okay, and the third thing he says is, um, the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Huge deceptions that cause Eve to fall into the trap, disobey God, and, and uh, shares it with Adam. He disobeys God, and from that point on, sin has entered the world, and the fall is the result of that. And everything that happens in the world today that has death, destruction, brokenness, um, no longevity to life is a result of this very act created by this evil being who deceives. So my application is a relatively simple application. I go to 1 John 2.15. It says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For with all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So I need to pursue the right things. This world is not what I'm to pursue. What I am to pursue actually is God's word, God himself, his spirit, his son. Those things lead to life. Pursuing the things of the world are a distraction from pursuing God. And I have to be very careful in it. When I pursue the things of the world, that's not of God. That is not of God. And I have to be well aware of that. And they, they do not lead to life. So the other thing is I need to know what good is. And I shared with this, this with you before. The Bible says that God is good. The spirit is good. The word is good. Jesus is the word. He's good. When man was created in the image of God, God said it was good. It was very good. So I need to pursue that. In Romans 16, 19, it says that we are to be excellent at what is good and innocent of evil. And that's, that's the call for us right now. And that's my application for this. So in my response to that, Lord Jesus, help me to know you better. Help me to call upon you more and help me to realize that my heart is bent on wrong, turning. I tend to be bent on decline. So help me to turn to you in all things. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless.